Today's chapel is both complicated and simple at the same time. Simple in the sense that on this day before Veterans Day, we surely want to stop and say thank you to those who are serving and those who have served their country in the armed forces. Those who feel called to protect others. Those who would risk their very lives that others might know and experience freedom and peace. So today we pause and we say thank you. And it's complicated because while we say thanks to soldiers, we are still challenged by our faith to be opposed to war. War is not part of God's design. Surely war is hell. It's complicated because the teachings of Jesus challenge us to turn the other cheek, to forgive 70 times, seven times, to love our enemies, and ultimately to place ourselves in God's kingdom, a kingdom without borders, a kingdom that stretches to include the neighbor, the other, the stranger, and even those who might hate and despise us. God challenges us to love, to a radical love, to love even beyond what seems to be our capability to love. So it is that as we approach this national holiday, we must struggle and wrestle with our citizenship as Americans and our citizenship as believers in the kingdom. And we must struggle with the brokenness that leads to war, the brokenness that all too often makes war our only option, the brokenness that exposes the world's doubts and fears, our doubts and fears our brokenness, that brokenness that marks our inability to love as Christ loved us, that brokenness that reveals our sinful nature. So it is that celebrating Veterans Day in chapel is simple and complicated. But that does not mean that we will not do it, obviously. In faith, confident in God's grace and love, confident in the life of the Spirit, we gather today to be community. While the politics of war can be confusing and divisive at best, and while the church must always challenge every act of war with the ideals of Christ and the kingdom, still we must find a way to be in relationship with each other. We must find a way to love and respect each other, a way to be in conversation, even though we might disagree on what needs to be done to bring about peace and justice. We must be both prophets and priests. In a recent article in The Lutheran, a magazine of the ELCA, there was a series of stories about welcoming the soldier back from war, back into our towns, back into our lives, and back into our churches. And it reported that we do not do that well. That our brothers and sisters who have chosen to serve in the armed forces seldom get the simple thank you and very rarely do they get folks to work through the complicated issues of walking them back into the full fellowship of the church by investing in the serious and deliberate conversations that lead to understanding, restoration, and healing. So it is today that we want to be sure to do the simple and right thing. We want to say thank you for your service, for your sacrifice, for your desire to keep us safe, especially those who have no one to stand up for them, those who have no one to protect them, those who suffer from the violence of others. And we want to begin to start doing the complicated and challenging things as you come and go. We want you to know that our prayers go with you and that our hearts desire to welcome you back, and not just back, but back and into conversations that will make a difference. And all the while we will pray that one day there will no longer be a time to die a time to kill, a time to hate, a time for war, but only that blessed day of healing, love, and peace, that day when all will be brought into the fullness of the kingdom of God. For that is surely the hope and the dream, the song that fills the hearts of all the peoples of the world. May such a song of hope guide us in the ways that lead to true and everlasting peace.